What is this? These are horsetails. Horsetails, at least in North America, from top to bottom, 24 to 36 inches. I mean, I've honestly, I don't think I've ever seen them more than 30 inches. Um, they have segments to them. And sometimes at each of the segments, you'll see um, things um, splaying out in a horizontal uh, level. These are dried from last year and they're just um, all going upwards but they may have some segments like this. They're, they come in a, a number of varieties. Interesting, yes. Um, more interesting is the fact that in Central America and South America, you can find them um, 16 to 24 feet. But even more interesting is in the fossil record. How big do you think that got? Yeah, that was 90 feet. So calamites in the fossil record horsetails commonly called um we're talking tree size i mean huge enormous why did they grow that big well plants had a different you know climate probably soil content um the magnetic field was potentially uh stronger uh, shielding you know both humans and uh you know plants from some of the harmful rays so there's a lot of factors and we probably don't know them all, but you've probably seen, you know, growing things in the winter time that the leaves are often very small on a plant. And then it seems like come spring, you know, in some indefinable point, all of a sudden I'll notice that the leaves are just growing honking big, you know, on some of my plants that are in the windows. That's just from a difference in light. So under the right conditions, things can grow really big. And if you come from a biblical standpoint, then post-flood, there was still pockets of things, according to the Bible, um, where both you know, plants and people were still big, but everything was dumbing down. Um, we couldn't support the kind of uh, growth and virility and, and longevity that we had pre-flood. Now again, you started wrenching the soil content and you, you put the right kind of nutrients and the, the right kind of growing conditions in place and you can get some pretty big you know, versions of these things now, including sweeter versions of things. They've done a lot of fascinating um, studies and, and I mean, you've probably heard about rock dust and some of these cool things where you enrich the soil and I mean, big, gorgeous, you know, strawberries, sweeter than normal, um, putting wood chips and, and there's a lot of things that people are doing nowadays uh, very easily to enrich soil and, and change the outcome of the nutritional value and size and, um, you know, less weeds, less bugs attacking because again, the stronger a plant, bugs are basically God's cleanup crew and you don't need the pesticides when your soil is strong and your um, plants are, are therefore hardier. So everything was designed to last and to, to be amazing, but you know, 6,000 years of getting dumber, shorter, and uglier for both humans and plants and everything else is taking its toll. So that's just a little glimpse into the pre-flood world. And again, if you go hunting for, um, in your area, um, see if you've, it depends on where you are in the country or world, I should say, but uh, a lot of times in the swampy areas or along um, creek beds and stuff like that, that's where you'll see these. And again, if you want to look online and see some of the, you know, the big fossils or buy one for yourself, really cool stuff. It's just really neat to examine the, the pre-flood world and what its implications are for our origins. Because again, it always boils down to apes, aliens, or Adam. Where did we come from? It, it has to be, you know, one of the three. Um, so explore it, come have some fun, you know, see what other videos we've got on some of these topics and enjoy the journey.